Hi, I'm Dana and my life consists of essentially consistently discovering things about myself and then be like, oh crap, I don't feel like I have anyone to relate to. I don't feel like I know what I'm doing. And it feels like there's so much to figure out about myself that it's absolutely terrifying. So then I start making content about it in the hopes that I'll find other people. And so far with the autism stuff, it's been working. So I thought with it being Pride Month, we may as well get started on the gay content and try and find some other people I relate to. I hope it's still interesting for the people that already watch me, because, I mean, you're already here. I hope you still find my videos interesting. But also, you know, we're all complex human beings and there's a lot to us and there's a lot to me and there's a lot to you. And I want to be myself. So today I wanted to specifically talk about why it took me so damn long to figure out I'm gay. Because it's been a journey for me. It's It's been a lot, to be honest. I spent many, many years thinking that I had figured out my sexuality and everything was gravy and I was sorted and I was wrong. <laughs> so I've got three things that I think majorly led to me not figuring out I'm gay until I'm 25 and I want to talk about them today so let's let's start doing that. So my first thing is bullying and trauma because I came out as a lesbian when I was 14 which wasn't the best idea because everyone in school very quickly knew. I'd been attending an LGBT group that was near my house and the people in school found out and they were like, oh, you're a fucking lesbian, are you? And I was like, yeah, I, I think I am. And then everyone started being really mean to me about it. And I experienced a lot of bullying based off of being a lesbian. And I also got a lot of shit from other gay people because one of the big things that's always been confusing to me is that I think men are attractive. I think men are very nice to look at, you know, there's some very aesthetically pleasing men. I do find men hot, one could say, which meant that when I told people I'm a lesbian and then they'd be talking about Johnny Depp or whoever, and I'd be like, oh yeah, he is hot. They'd be like, oh, so you're not a real lesbian, then you're not actually a lesbian. And that made me think like, oh, I guess I'm not. I guess I'm not actually a lesbian because I think men are attractive. So I then started to call myself bisexual which meant that the bullying I received from straight people didn't change at all because you're still gay enough to be gay so they can bully you. But I also then got all of the gay people I was friends with pretty much at the time telling me like, oh, don't worry, you'll pick a side, you'll figure it out, you'll figure it out. No one's, no one's bisexual. It's just the phase you go through before you figure out if you're actually straight after all or you're fully gay. Duh, obviously, because bi visibility is constantly just erased and shat all over. But obviously for me, they were correct. They were, they were right. And that meant that as I was figuring out like, oh, I only find men attractive like to look at, you know, I don't want to, I don't want them to touch me. I don't want them to come near me. I don't want to go near them. I think everything else about them is kind of gross. I just, you know, if, if I see a Jimmy Page look like, I'm going to be like, yeah, that Jimmy Page look like is hot because Jimmy Page was hot. You know, it's just, they look nice. <laughs> I don't want to go anywhere with them. I was very much given the message from other gay people that that meant I was bisexual when it didn't. It just meant I think men are nice to look at sometimes. I'm very much a lesbian. But obviously being constantly told you're going to choose a side, for me it meant that when I came around to the point where my thinking was like, oh shit, I definitely am on one side of this. Obviously no one chooses a side, that's not how sexuality works. But you know, so I was thinking like, oh fuck, I don't think I am like sexually attracted to men. I was like, no, but I have to be because otherwise they were right and I'm picking a side. So I have to be bisexual. I have to be into men still because otherwise I'm doing what they said I would and I'm picking a side. So it was once I'd figured out that I was bisexual that I felt comfortable to actually come out because every everyone knew that I was gay because I'd been outed. I didn't want to come out really. So I started actually coming out by telling people I was bisexual and that was another journey because my father's reaction when I told him like I was very emotional when I told him and I was like dad I'm bisexual and he cried and then said at least you're not a lesbian so that was a lot to unpack when I realized that I was after he'd already died and that's still a lot whenever I do think about it when I came out to my mum I was again very emotional and she was very like yeah okay your brother's already gay like this doesn't matter just go to school and that was very disappointing and um, in invalidating I, it didn't seem like she gave a shit and it was again a lot to think about <laughs> so it was for me it was very much like 
the straight people in my life presented that like oh well bisexuality is the better choice that's the better option because that means that you're still like half straight aren't you duh <laughs> it's bullshit but you know that's how the straights tend to think a lot of the time so to them i was still half straight and it was all gravy but to the gay people that i'd made friends with i was now going through a phase where i was going to choose a side one day and it felt like i didn't fully belong with either community you know, and as much as I love the gay community, at that age, with the type of people I was hanging around with, they were negative for me. It wasn't a good time because it was very much like, you're not really one of us because you're only bi, but you will choose a side, you'll figure it out, but that means that you could be straight, so we can't fully induct you into the club. And it was just not great. And definitely had a big impact on how I like, continued to see my sexuality growing up because I was, I was 14, 15, 16 at that point. And those were the messages I was being given about like what it means to be gay. And of course, alongside that, the second thing is that we all grew up in a heteronormative society. So I very much saw it as like the default normal to be attracted to men, you know? And I absolutely saw it as like, well, that's the normal, natural thing. And if it's natural, that means everyone can do it. We can all do it if it's natural. So I can be attracted to men, it's fine. And it was, definitely more of a conscious choice than I realised at the time and th than I ever wanted to like fully accept. It was very much me being like, guess I'd better be bisexual because, you know, one of my dad's first thoughts was, I'm not going to get to walk you down the aisle, which bullshit again. But you know, it's, I grew up having been a slimy female at birth. I grew up with baby dolls. I grew up with my Ken and Barbie dolls in their little wedding outfits. It was expected that I was gonna grow up and find a nice man and spit out some grandkids for mum and dad. And I would live their perfect little imagined life for their little girl. And without even really realizing it, that's definitely what I'd come to expect of my life, you know? I think I was about 15 when I set up my first fucking Pinterest board for weddings, like figuring out my color schemes and that. Cause it was just always, I always knew that I was gonna marry a man. You know, I might be attracted to women, but I'll marry a man because that's what you do. That's the normal, natural path. And it was all very just ingrained in my mind. Like the only relationship I really saw growing up was my parents. So I based everything around them. And obviously they were male and female. So I was like, yeah, that's, that's who you marry. And even as I grew up and knew that like gay marriage is a thing, I was still really like, yeah, but it's not like real marriage, is it? And obviously it fucking is, like that's absolute bullshit, it's total homophobia. But in my little like growing up prepubescent brain, I was just like, yeah, but it's not a real wedding because that has to be between a man and a woman, so that's what I'll do. You know, like the rest of you can have your little gay weddings if you want to, but I'll have a real one with a man because I can, because I'm bisexual. <sighs> you know, it was just a lot easier for me to accept like, yeah, I am interested in women too, but I don't have to be with a woman. I can be with a man, I can be normal. I can be nice and normal and natural like everyone else. And as you can tell, that brings us to the next point of internalized homophobia. And this is definitely something that I am still massively working through. And it's one of the things that's been bringing me down a lot lately. I've been depressed to absolute shit lately and it's for a million different reasons, but internalized homophobia is definitely one of them because I very much did see being straight as like the natural normal thing and being gay is a deviant from that and I never saw it as like necessarily a bad thing but I didn't see it as a good thing or an okay thing either I, it wasn't positive you know it may not have been negative but it wasn't positive either you know I think it's very very difficult to not have some degree of internalized homophobia no matter who you are or where you're from. In some ways I think I'm quite lucky because obviously my older brother's gay and I knew my parents weren't going to kick me out. I knew nothing horrible was going to happen to me but there's still all the little, the little indiscretions, the little tiny things where you're just like oh these people don't like actually accept gay people and that's definitely how my family was you know like it's okay that my brother's gay but like if he could not be they'd prefer that and I haven't really come out to a lot of my family I've only really come out to my mum and brother you know I was so excited to introduce my mum to my first girlfriend and she was lovely to her don't get me wrong but when my girlfriend's not right there she's suddenly just Dana's friend Dana's good, good friend, her Dana's best friend. And it's all things like that. And you know, that's the environment I grew up in. My brother never had boyfriends over. He had 
friends over who just happened to sleep in his room. That was his boyfriend. That was his partner. And it was never, ever obvious in that way, you know? It was a very closed acceptance of if we don't see it, then it's okay. And I've never been the type that's okay with that. I wasn't about to like be like, oh, here's my friend. Cause she's not, she's my girlfriend and I love her. And if you don't want to accept that she's my girlfriend and I'm in love with her, I don't really want to be around you. But I've gone on a little rant about my mother's homophobia and not my internalized homophobia because it's uncomfortable to talk about. Cause obviously I was in an eight year relationship and then I realized I was a lesbian. And I just consistently had the thought of like, no, no, I don't want to be, I don't want to be a lesbian. I want to be bisexual because then I can still have my boyfriend, I can have my girlfriend. It was a polyamorous relationship. I wasn't just cheating on everyone. And you know, in my mind, I was like, no, this, this is currently perfect. I can't fuck this up by being fucking gay. Like, you know, just like in my teen years, it was the whole thing of like, no, that's okay for other people. It's okay for other people to be lesbians. It's okay for other people to be doing this and that and getting gay, gay married and whatever else. But not for me, because I can be bisexual and I can just do the, the good bit and not have to deal with the parts of being gay that fully gay people in my mind at the time had to deal with. And obviously you're fully gay if you're bisexual. It's bullshit. We're not going for bioasia here. But, you know, for me, it was very much, I can have the best of both worlds followed by this very sudden realization of like oh but i'm not actually into men like at all it feels completely different being with a woman i've never felt like i'm in love in this way i've never felt these feelings before i'm definitely a lesbian and like i say it's one of the things i'm still working through i still have days where i'm suddenly in tears and i'm just like i don't want to be gay but i am that's the way i'll be and you know, like, I I wouldn't, I wouldn't change anything. Like things haven't gone the way I wanted them to. Things haven't gone the way I expected them to. But the way that I felt when I'm around my girlfriend, I wouldn't change anything to have felt like that. I, I wouldn't change a fucking thing. You know, I think if anything, that kind of made it harder because it's like, I've got this beautiful thing where like, I, I truly feel like I'm in love for the first time in my life and you know, I feel so comfortable around her in a way that I never have with, with being in a relationship with a man. There's just all these feelings and ways that it's so much more natural. It feels more normal. It feels the way that like, I always thought being in love and having all these experiences would feel. And I had so many thoughts of like, oh, well, I guess this is how it feels when I was with a man. And it's beautiful and amazing and incredible. And I feel like I'm like unlocking parts of myself I never knew and gaining like a new confidence because I'm aware of this new part of myself. And yet underneath it all, I'm also like, yo, but it'd be so much easier if I could just be straight or bi, you know? It'd be so much easier. Because then I could have had those feelings while I was with a man. Then I could have just carried on my nice relationship that I was very comfortable with where it didn't feel like there was as much at risk or anything. It, it was just easier. But I also wouldn't change anything. And it's quite a complex and nuanced thing, I suppose. But it's, yeah, it's been a struggle. You know, and that's been a struggle for me coming from a family that was much more accepting than most and much kinder and nicer about it than most would be. And it's still been a fucking struggle. And it's still taken me this long to realize that I'm a lesbian. And I still feel very uncomfortable saying the word lesbian. We've got a lot to unpack still. I've got a lot to figure out still, but I also, I also know that I actually am figuring myself out now. You know, it, I know that this is the right thing for me. I know that I'm not bisexual. I know that I am a lesbian and I know that I'm on the right path to figure out more about myself and be able to be more of who I'm supposed to be as a person and who I want to be as a person and so on and so forth. But I just haven't really seen anyone talk about these kind of things with experiences involved. And I don't know if it's just me as a person or me as an autistic person or everyone, if, if everyone's the same. But I also, I, I really need experiences to go along with it to fully understand what you mean, to be able to relate to it. And that's, that's what I'm trying to do here. I'd really love to know that other people relate to any of this and feel the same way in any way whatsoever. <laughs> but yeah, I've 
I think I've said everything I wanted to say for this video. Lord knows if I actually have. But I'm done speaking to myself now. So I am gonna go. If you liked this video, I am gonna be making more like this. I have made a lot of other videos about fashion and vintage stuff and autism and various topics. So it'd be lovely if you want to hang around by subscribing. I upload videos every Tuesday and Friday at 4.30 UK time. And I've got all my links to social media and the likes below. So I am going to go. Whoever you are and wherever you are, I hope you're having a lovely morning, evening, day, afternoon, week, month, year. And I'll see you again in a few days.